Welcome to the geek to geek podcast where it's new phone day. I'm Void and I'm here with my co-host Beige. New phone, who dis? <laughs> Today we're talking about uh, new phones because we both got new phones in the last like week, week and a half here and you yeah. change phones a lot but I, I haven't upgraded phones the entire time we've been doing this podcast so it's a big deal for me. I jumped from an iPhone 6 to an iPhone XS, not the Max, but the <laughs> XS, the 10S. I, I never know which one's the correct way to say it. But anyway. I think it's actually 10S. I think but it is. It's, it's silly, and I don't, I hate it. Like, I absolutely hate that it's not just the number 10, that that it's just, it, it's. I just call it the iPhone X. Yeah, it's weird. But uh, I got that, and you also did that, and you left Android yep. behind. I did. I completely left Android, and I actually grabbed the uh, 10s Max. Uh, my wife, uh, I think our wives, uh, you and me, and uh, our wives, like our exact opposite. That you got the little one, and I got the big one. But and Jennifer got the little one, but your wife got the big one, right? Yep, exactly. No, I we took a look at the Max, and I was like, that thing is huge. It would drive me crazy for my use case, but like it's perfect for my wife. So she got it, and she's loving it. This is actually a smaller phone than the one i had before that the screen is bigger that there's more screen real estate on it but in terms of it being tall and it's just a little barely wider but it's not as tall as the one i had before so this one doesn't feel like it's really any different uh than the note 8 that i had before so it's uh it's really just the same thing that I'm holding in my hand. Once I got the, uh, I don't even remember which case I got. It was one of the Presidio. It was a spec Presidio, I think, uh, that I liked better than the Otterbox Symmetry I had before. And it's roughly the same thing. It's, uh, But I like it. Like I'm really loving this phone so much. How are you? Because mine wasn't a huge, like, tech upgrade yours was yours was a what three years uh difference in terms of it the was technology like four almost four and a half years since we upgraded like it's been a while and well it was oh, one man. of the interesting things too because like buying a phone has changed dramatically and like i had just been putting it off because the last time was kind of annoying like having to sync all your stuff over to the new phone and like i don't know just yeah. you know you would you would have that like credit that builds up on your account and then like every so often you can go in and get a couple hundred bucks towards the cost of a uh-huh. phone and like they don't do that the same way anymore um but there's a lot more plans where you can just like roll it into the cost of your phone bill or do it through a finance plan and all of them seem to have options for like zero percent for 24 months which i didn't realize yep. until like I-, I was basically thinking like you know when I get towards like after Christmas, after the holiday season, I'll probably use some of that money to get a new phone. Um, and then somebody's like, well, have you looked at any of the the programs or the finance options? And I was like, oh, I don't like to finance phones. I don't want to pay interest on something. Yeah. You know, I like to just buy it straight up. And they're like, oh, you don't have to pay interest anymore. Like, when's the last time you looked at phones? And that's where I was like, <laughs> oh, it's been a long time. Um so, yeah, that's what I did. I went with, I, I researched a bunch of the different options. I went with the iPhone upgrade program because it was basically everything I wanted. Plus, it had Apple Care. Plus, if you want to upgrade the phone sometime in the 24 months after you've done 12 payments, you can do that. So, that one just worked really well for us. But, yeah, I mean, and we like it. We're like, both of us, both my wife and I, we're liking our phones a lot. And it was a huge upgrade from the technology side, like you said. Like, it's so much faster, it's so much more responsive. And, I don't know. I'm just loving it. And I I basically did the same thing as you guys, except I've already been on the payment plan. So this one's only a few dollars more a month than I was paying on the note that I got, I think, last October. And it's it's fine for me to do that. I don't mind having the payment on my on my plan and doing that. But Verizon, we have a friend who works at Verizon uh, who Jennifer went to college with, and he helped us get everything set up. And the iPhone upgrade program that you did is through Apple itself and comes with Apple Care, where Verizon basically has the same thing that you can do with just straight up upgrading after 12 payments uh, just when you get a phone through them. So I don't have the Apple Care with it, but I think I have whatever the Verizon insurance is. Uh, just still on there from when I did the note, but it's uh, it's something that I that I'm glad that we have because as much as I change phones, you know, tossing a couple couple more dollars next year when whatever the next one comes out is something that I'll very likely do. Yeah, you upgrade a lot. I mean, I want to talk about that, but first, I kind of want to hear about <laughs> your 
like Android to iOS switch because you have a history here, right? And I know you okay. wanted to recap yeah. before we got too far. Okay, so first off, this phone, like you were saying that it's so snappy, so much snappier than uh, than the 6 that you had, that this one is almost double as fast as the, the Note that I had. I had the Note 8 from last year, and it was top of the line, like the best hardware for a phone that was out, I think, in the U.S., and it's great. And I've never really noticed it being slow or clunky at all. And then I get this one and it's loading like these games that I've been playing. It loads them faster that I'll had to sit, have had to sit there and wait on load screens. And this one's like, oh, it takes like three seconds where I was waiting. I mean, it's more than double and stuff like that, where I was waiting 30 seconds to a minute for a load screen on like Marvel Strike Force. This one three to 10 seconds maybe and it's just it's it's insane how much faster this one is in a lot of ways and it's like i love android that's what hurt me so much uh to to like go why i keep going back and forth because like my first android phone was actually the note one the very first note when it came out i saw it in the mall with uh when we were just kind of going by something i don't even remember uh what store it was but i saw it. i was like oh my god this giant phone would be wonderful and it was way before giant phones were cool like everybody thought i was crazy for uh, for trading in my iphone for this like tablet that i was holding against my head and now even i think the smallest iphone is bigger than what the original note was i'm thinking it was like a 5.1 inch screen and i think like it's 5.6 5.3 now for the smallest iphone you can get but so I loved it, but the Samsung TouchWiz, that's what they did. That's what they call their uh, skin over the Android interface. It was really young. A lot of things didn't work right. So I started flashing my ROMs, customizing it, getting new, uh, basically new versions of Android on it. And the battery was awful. So the battery, I, I trashed it. Like I didn't, well, I didn't trash it. I ended up selling it and I went back to iPhone. Then I dropped it and shattered it. And so I decided that I missed Android's interface. So I bought the Google Nexus 4 uh, because Nexuses are stock Android or they were stock Android. And uh, it was great. I was running one day and uh, pulled it out of my pocket with the cord on my headphones and shattered that one too. So I went back to iOS because that's what AT&T would give me for free. And then I broke that one too. And I just kept with iPhone because it was easier. I mean, then last year I got a wild hair, wanted to go to Android again, see what was going on. The Note 8 looked so fantastic. And it was like the Samsung interface was great. They'd improved it a lot. And it for, honestly, it's pretty close to iOS. It works like an iPhone for the most part, except for the you know the Android notification center and things like that uh, with the icons in the toolbar, all the stuff like that. And I loved it. Like I loved this phone, but the battery was still not good. The battery was still I could get. I w- went from the uh, iOS, not iOS, the iPhone seven to the Note eight. Um, I didn't. I didn't break the. Uh, the iPhone 7, I ended up just trading it in, and uh, the battery was still fine, the 7 Plus, and the battery on the Note 8 was really terrible. Like, not really terrible, but I couldn't go for a day without having to charge it a little bit. Like, sitting at my home, at home on my desk, it ended up losing its charge a lot, even when I wasn't using it. And that's just kind of an Android thing. Um and but it charged fast i never really had to worry about it I, it used the same plug as my laptop because it's USB C. so i just plugged it in for a little bit got a charge and then went about my day um but i really like the idea of going back to ios i got really frustrated with like group text wouldn't send like we were trying to work out for the star wars rpg we were talking about a few weeks ago and i couldn't see one person's text and then i got them the next day when i woke up uh mine wouldn't send uh videos would uh would just degrade in quality whenever like my wife would send me uh pictures of my dog when i was in spain or uh, videos of my dog when i was in spain it's like but i wanted to see my puppy and it's like terrible she had to send it over like facebook messenger just to keep the the better quality and it's like some people are cool with that my sister-in-law is fine with that it doesn't bother her at all but but i wasn't i i needed it to be like this this honestly this perfect little box that did everything i wanted it to do and the only way i could get it to do that was 
was iOS. And I love Android, but the slickness and, and iOS is just is just insane. But I will say, you know, for all that, for as great as it is, uh, you know, as much as I love Face ID and stuff like that, it I miss the back button. The fact that iOS doesn't have a back button, like that you can't just, like the way I had it was I swipe up and there was the home button, the back button, and the uh, app window, the the separator thing. And I, I, I miss the back button just to go back one page or go back in the in the browser it was so nice just to be able to have that um i could also double tap the power button to get to the camera and it's way easier than doing it what it's on ios i honestly still can't figure out how to open the camera from the screen very easily <laughs> like do you like do you have like i'm trying it right now it's like i can't it's figure 3D, out if I 3d it's 3d touch you just you touch it 3D on it touch? and then you touch on it harder it's like Put because, your hand on it and then push on it slightly harder and it'll do it. See, and I've tried, I thought it was 3D touch and because the 7 Plus had it and so I didn't really think that, I figured that's what it was, but it's like I couldn't get it ever to get it to open right. And so I'm like, I just want to double tap this freaking button. And, uh, but hey, Siri, Siri is so much better. She just came on when I said that. I didn't think about it. Uh, Siri is so much more useful than OK Google. Like, I use voice chat a lot. I use this virtual assistant thing a ton because I'm lazy and Siri's just better. There, there's just hands down. She connects to the internet. There were times when uh, Google just wouldn't connect and it was like, well, that's useless. Or it told me that it didn't have a phone number for my wife. That was the most annoying thing. I was like, hey, text Jennifer. And it was like, I'm sorry, I don't have a phone number for Jennifer Keaton. And I'm like, why would you know her last name? Yes, you do. And it was just like, it was just crazy. Um, the typing is better. I didn't know I made as many typos as I did on Android. Like it was, it was fine. I love the swipe keyboard for when I was lazy, just my phone sitting there, I could swipe on it and get what I wanted to say. But I just use Siri for that now, really. Like, like it's just easier to text. The predictive text works better. It's like, I'm happier with this now. Like, I like it better on iOS now after coming directly off of Android, off of the best Android experience I've had. Like, I don't think I'm going to be going back. That there are a lot of things I really love about it. That there are so many customization options that I could have the app set up however I wanted. I love the widgets. I've been reaching for the S Pen on this thing, and it's just not there. How I got used to being able to just actually hand write out notes, stuff like that, I'm really going to miss because there were quality of life things. But just the overall presentation, I think iOS has it so much better now. And even since I went a year ago, that, that that the changes that they've made now because of it being a new hardware generation with the from the 7 plus to the 10s is a massive improvement from the last time I was on it and I mean my wife only had the SE which was basically an iPhone 6 and an iPhone 5 body so it it's it's much much better than it used to be I know. I'm glad you're liking it. Like I, I was so happy when you moved back, and suddenly <laughs> we were. It's so weird. Like we were texting more, and you, you're right. Your typos got a lot better. But I mean, like that part didn't bug <laughs> me as much. I did notice, but just like I don't know. There's something. We'll talk about iMessage here in a little bit because iMessage is almost its own topic. But we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I noticed the battery life just like you. But I mean, some of that is like I was on my third battery. Uh, in the six, it was just time to upgrade, and oh, now man, like yeah. I have not seen my 10s battery underneath 50 percent. Like it's, I've never made it oh, wow. to the end of the day, even with heavy usage, it's still at like 50 percent charge, which is insane for me because my six would not make it through three quarters of a day if I didn't find some charging time in there. So that was oh, huge. Yeah. But I mean, there are games knock mine down because yeah. I've been playing these actual graphically intensive games uh, like a lot. So it'll knock mine down. Mine's on like 60 percent right now. And by the end of the night, it might be on 35. Uh, but that, that's with me basically sitting with games auto-playing through stuff during the day. I mean, it is insane how oh, different yeah, it is. It. No, that still, if it can go like all day with it, that's kind of amazing. Yeah, really. Like the battery on this thing is huge. And no, so there are friction points every time you switch new phone, like yep. restoring it and everything. Um, oh, God. I felt like the, the restart process went way better for me this time than it did the last time or two. I feel like there's always like something that you run into with it. Um, but this time I just kind of like 
plug it in, restore it, and it was just there and it just worked. So, I mean, they must have made improvements in that in the last four years. I still think iTunes is garbage but i mean oh, itunes is still garbage yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's one not of the good. worst programs that they force you to interact with but i make it work for restoring my phone um the one thing that does bug me is the it's kind of the log back into everything and sort out your two-factor authentication game with a new phone and it's like i spent hours right when i got my phone that was the first thing i did i was like i don't want friction here i'm just gonna do it all and get it all out of the uh, out of the way um right it did go smoother than the last time, though. So, like, okay, good. There have been improvements, but yeah, still, I'm I'm really glad that I didn't turn in my old phone until after I had the new one 100 percent set up. That made it much yeah. much easier to be able to just like pull up in my authenticator apps and like you know cross reference stuff if I needed to. Um, so yeah, it, it went pretty fast. And then I took my phone back to the store a day or two later because you have like a 14 day window when you can trade it in. Yeah. So yep. that's definitely the way to do it. I like that a lot. Oh wow, yeah, that's that's really good because I did you end up trading your old phone back in? Yeah. Yep. No, okay. I got credit for see, it. See, and I w- I refuse to do that. Like that's one that I absolutely refuse to do unless I have to. Like with the upgrade program, you have to. But I sell mine that I I unlock and wipe and then throw them on eBay and get double to triple what the carrier will give you in credit. So I can't I can't do that. Like I would have I would have hardcore sold the uh, the six. Like you can still get international folks uh, buying unlocked hardware like that. Pretty 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 readily but yeah i mean i didn't have like a backup for mine like when i went from the seven plus like i assumed that you know i had the icloud backup like i you know i had set up and uploaded which apparently doesn't exist anymore so i had to go through the list of you know the purchased history purchase history of all your apps (laughs) i just went down it and installed all of my apps that way which wasn't nearly as bad as it had been previously because i've been trying to do kind of an app purge over the last few years and not rely on nearly as many of them just for every little thing like just having so many on my phone and so it didn't take nearly as long to, to get that going as I thought. And since I was moving from Google to, to iOS, wasn't really porting over my pictures because they were in Google Photos. So all of that was was fine. I still had all of my passwords saved through like iCloud Keychain from my laptop. So I got all of the, the password stuff uh, done because I have a Mac uh, computer. Um, I my stuff saved in Chrome, all of that kind of stuff for Google worked, but I didn't have any like two factor stuff through apps that all of mine is either SMS or email based. And I try to avoid app based ones because they really, they really annoy me for stuff like this. And I didn't have any trouble at all because I'm just porting the same number back and forth. Oh, that's good. Uh, and uh, the only things I haven't done are my Battle.net and Steam Guard. Uh, they're the only two that I actually have on apps that I have to do for a 2FA. And I forgot about them until I saw this in the notes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't put the Authenticator and Steam back on there. I was like, well, hope I don't need to log into WoW for a while. Um, <laughs> but You can figure uh, and, it out and if what's, you do. Yeah, if I do, I, I'd, I'd get it. I'd be able to go in and remove it and do all this email verification. I've had to do it before. But my uh, my uh, World of Warcraft account expires tomorrow. So it, And I haven't logged in since we talked about it on the podcast last time. I have not logged in. I did not get that last month in uh, that I thought I was going to. I just haven't cared right now. It's not been on my mind. So I was wrong about that. I got two months in on uh, Battle for Azeroth. But uh, because of that, I I haven't even put that stuff on there. Oh, interesting. Oh, well, yeah. I'm glad that the switchover went smoothly for you. I mean, you also switch phones yeah. a lot more than me, so you've had more experience doing it. That probably helps a little <laughs> bit. Um, I did want to run down a couple of like the features that I didn't know how I would react to, and now I have reactions to them. So we can go right. probably pretty quick here. True Tone. What did you think of True Tone? Okay. okay, so here's the thing. All right, let me before we even get into into what it is, I'm because I'm not 100 percent sure on what it's supposed to do and what what is it like for people who don't know what this is and for me because i don't actually know the the true purpose of what it does what is it first so what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to read the light temperature in your surrounding environment and change the phone's color 
to match so that to your eye it looks like a consistent color so it's right. supposed to make okay. it look more true in the surrounding area basically whatever your environment is um okay, that's what i thought to me I have been working in video and marketing for my entire career, and I know what colors are supposed to look like on a screen. And as soon as you start messing with it, I know that it's wrong. Like, I saw that, and my yes. eye immediately knew that this was not right. And so I turned it off. Like, I couldn't, I tried it. Like, I tried it for a minute, and I was like, nope, this is going to drive me insane. So I turned it off. My wife really likes it. I don't know why, but she enjoys it. I, my same thing. Like I, my wife had hers for about maybe a week or two before mine because my Max shipped a couple of weeks later, and maybe a week later, I don't remember. And hers kept looking dim, and I, it was funny because on her old phone, like I used to, uh, like get on her, like you're gonna hurt your eyes because she basically kept it up at, at max brightness all the time, and she didn't care, didn't notice, whatever. But I'm like, oh my god, that blinds me in the night. And she never thought about it. She turned this one, like got this phone, and it's uh, it's dim and hazy to me. And I'm like, what? Why? Why? And when I got mine, I realized it that not only is it she's working on the the brightness a little bit lower on this one, but she has the true tone on it. And when I showed her side by side with mine, like I immediately found why my my phone looked a little bit uh, warm and hazy without the night shift on. And I'm like, oh, this is awful. This is terrible. She left. She's like, no, I like it like that. And even side by side, looking at like what LCD screens and OLED screens are supposed to look like, it was like, nope, I can't. I need this bright, you know, I don't even know what, what do you call that? Like, like primary <laughs> colors, like I true colors because true tone ain't it. No, like, I mean, it's like, it's in general, an LCD screen tends to be a slightly more blue shifted, which is what our eyes are used to seeing. If you've been looking at screens for yeah. years, like we have and true tone for the most part, pulls it more towards the warm colors. So like yellow for yeah. the most part, but also some like oranginess to it. Um, I just can't like, I, I spent, my career looking at color temperatures and I know when it's wrong and it would just drive me insane. So true yeah. tone was right out right away. Um, yeah. Face immediately, ID, like before I did anything. Yeah. Face ID on the other hand, I was very apprehensive. It was kind of one of the reasons that I was dragging my feet on switching right. over because like touch ID worked, touch ID worked well. And like, I was worried about switching over to the new gestures because there's no home button. Um, but also like, I just didn't know if touch ID would work. And I, I was apprehensive and I love it. Like it just, it works. It's so fast compared to touch ID and it's basically instant. Like the second I'm looking at my yeah. phone, it's already unlocked and like ready to do its thing. Jennifer's is a little slower than that. Like, I don't know why. I don't know if she it's, should rescan the, her face. She, she should probably has. reset it then. Cause like mine she is did. instant. It is so fast. Like I can't even, unless it doesn't recognize my face, which only happens every once in a while. And it teaches itself your face every time you put in your password right away. So like it's happening less and less. I've only had the phone for a week and I can barely get it to like mess up. The only time that I can still sometimes have it mess up is if it's pitch black in my room at night and my glasses are off all at the same time. Then sometimes it'll be like, oh, I'm not sure if this is you. Um, yeah, I need to actually do mine without my glasses because that's about the only time mine doesn't recognize me is in the dark when I'm trying to turn my phone on uh, it, at night without my glasses on. Like that's the, the. But when I have my glasses on, I put my glasses on to test it, and it sees me. It, yeah, it, so it recognizes me in the dark. You can scan a second appearance for, of yourself. So I scan my primary with my glasses, and then my secondary without my glasses, and it was way way better after that. But I mean outside of like setting it up and that whole thing which it it wasn't that hard and you can always rescan just like if touch id didn't work you just reset it up um it just seems to work it seems to work really really well and i like the lock screen notification stuff too where it will tell you what notification like the apps from the notifications but it won't actually show you a notification unless you look at the phone and it unlocks with your face so you can kind of like you can see it on the table nearby you but like if you have it out on the table like in a meeting or something um nobody else is seeing your notifications as they're coming in they would just see that oh you have a text message oh you have an email until you actually pick it up and look at it and then they all build out to be kind of like the traditional 
traditional way that you would think of them. I thought that was really and, cool. And I like that too, but I'm used to it because the Note actually had an always on screen that uh, it had basically a really dim screen that you could put a wallpaper on, just a little picture or something that also had icons for notifications that when you got a new text message or something, you would just have a little circle icon for the text message app or whatever it was, Twitter, anything. And so I, I got used to that anyway, where I could turn it on and then open it up and see what the notification was because I had it, uh, once you unlocked it, you could see the, the notification uh, text, the content. And Face ID on the iPhone works a lot better than the face identification on facial recognition on the Note. And it's not that that was bad because it saw me all the time. Like I'd click it and it would just open up. But that's also a trade-off for me that you still have to slide up. Like you still have to swipe up on the iPhone even after it's unlocked. And it drives me crazy because on the Note, once you uh, re- once it recognized your face, it just opened to to your home screen that it's like, oh, you're you. Here you go. And it's so much better than having to swipe up. The only time it's not, and I know the reason they do it is because it's iPhone, because the you open it up, like you you raise it up and you see your notifications, it recognizes you and then it unlocks your notification text right there where you can see your interact with them. And in on Android, you go in and then you go into your notification center by swiping down, which gives you all of that same information. So, I mean, it's essentially the same thing, but I now have to swipe up instead of down. And right now I'm not used to it. And, uh, <laughs> But I also, to interact with those notifications on the home screen whenever I didn't do that, it was a swipe thing. I I had to, like, swipe them to interact. And on this one, I actually just touch them and it takes me there. And apparently, I am am not capable of just tapping things that I, I, I... always i'm so used to doing it on the note that i i go to the home screen and then go to the notification center and then i touch it that uh that i don't ever use the notifications like i'm supposed to and i've got to get better about that yeah you um, probably readjust but, back to ios world yep yep yeah i mean but i really like it that the uh, face ID. i thought i was gonna hate it like i was like you that i'm like uh t- like touch id works and i had face i had uh and on the note the fingerprint scanner was on the back of it by the camera so i just would touch i would grab the phone tap the back of it and it would open up automatically and so i keep touching the same place on the back of this phone and i'm like oh it's a different phone so uh, it's like it's already unlocked so i actually have a little bit of user friction on there so that i uh, that's taking it longer <laughs> because i keep trying to do it a different way right now yeah but on the flip side of it me coming from ios with touch id and the home button i adjusted to the new swipe gestures with no home button in less than a day by the end of my first day and i know that i had adjusted because i still had both phones and i had to keep going back and forth between them to check things right and every time by the end of the that day every time i would pick up my six i would do a swipe instead of hit the home button uh, like it took less than a day to adjust which was great the swipe up helps me also on this one i'm used to that part of it like interacting with apps and everything because i had my my android set to hide the uh, toolbar where the home back and back button uh, i had to swipe up once to get to it so now whenever i need to get out of an app it is still just natural to be like okay up and it's like oh that got rid of it that time i don't even have to press the home button again yeah so i do like that like it's it does work a lot and i thought the gestures were going to be hard like to go to the app switcher and it's like just swiping up and holding it for a second is i thought it was going to be terrible and it's actually great to be able to do that like it's so much easier than double tapping yeah no i like them a lot i like the what they've done with touch gestures um one of the other things that i was unsure about and one of the reasons i was holding out was i had to buy a bunch of dongles like Mm. i held out because i did not want to have to use dongles for my phone to get to like aux adapters basically so Mm. i i just gave in i bought like four aux adapters for myself on day one (laughs) and one for my wife um and you said that you haven't had one or you haven't I, used any of them since I haven't used ever? a single one since I've gotten this one. I had the one that came from the old 7 Plus that it came with it. At that point when it was the first generation that, that they actually changed over to no, uh, to no 3, was it 3.5 it, with the, the normal plug, uh, yeah. aux plug, 
that one. Yes, I can't talk tonight. When they changed over, they uh, they gave you one, and now they don't because they are assuming everyone has one by now. Uh, I did not. Or so switched I just, over. I bought four because in a given day, I have three different pairs of headphones that I use basically every single work day. Even if I'm just home for the day, there's one particular set that I use, sometimes two. So like I have headphones stashed all around my environment. Um, that's one of the reasons that like everyone's like, oh, just switch to wireless. Okay, well, if I do that, I need to go buy like four pairs of wireless headphones and then I have to figure out how to charge them all during my schedule. Yep. Like that's yep. that's a big friction point. So I just went with the dongles and it's working out. Um, it's annoying. I'm not going to lie. It's annoying. I still, that was one of the reasons I was hesitating, but I went with it. I'm making it work. So I'm there. Um, the haptic feedback, on the other hand, was another one of those things where I went into it thinking, I'm not sure if I'm going to like this. I might turn this off. This seems like it could be extremely annoying because I've seen so many different people in hardware companies try haptic feedback and I've never liked uh-huh. it before. I absolutely love it. Like, it, it's great. I haven't run into a single case where I was disappointed or that it made me want to turn it off. Like, I was very, very ready to give up on the haptic feedback. Like, I think on day one, I was like, I don't know about this. Like, I'm, I'm pretty ready to just not even try it. <laughs> I'm glad right. that I did because it seems to just work. Yeah, it does. And I wasn't even aware that this was something that they were putting in, that it, that it worked. It feels like the switch where the motion controls, all of the stuff that they did with the haptics, it just feels fine. It's there. It's like it's not just like vibrating in your hand. It is it's subtle enough and they, there's enough control over it that you just feel what it's supposed to feel like. Like when you raise the phone uh, and it, like it unlocks, you'll get a small you'll get a small uh, buzz or whatever it is. And when you uh, like go into the app switcher, there's just a very tiny bit of feedback that lets you know you've hit that point. And I thought that this was going to be fairly annoying. I'm like, I usually turn it off on all of the Android phones that I do. It's usually off immediately because it runs the battery down more. But apparently it doesn't on this. That that it works. It's I keep it on my keyboard. Everything. It's uh. I didn't think that I was going to care about it, but I do. Yep. It was just another feature I was ready to dismiss immediately, and I'm glad I gave it a shot because I love it. Um, Wireless charging was one that I was pretty sure I was going to like. You seem to not care based on your notes here. Eh. I've used wireless charging on the note and I got a free wireless charger from somebody for a blog thing or an Instagram thing from a long time ago. And I'm like, I used it and it's a thing and it's like, all right. And I don't care. It's like I have to have it plugged up and put somewhere to use this. So I'm like, I can, why Why do I just have a base that I can sit this on instead of just this cord that's right here in the exact same place? It's like, uh, I don't, I, guess I, I care for nothing me, about it's it. Like, there's, it's just that little bit of friction that it takes away. Like, yeah, you set them up one time, but like with my iPhone, I was plugging it in and unplugging it a bunch of places every single day. Uh, part of that was because the battery was getting older. But also, it's just like we're also used to plugging in our phone all the time that it doesn't seem like a big deal. Um, so I got one of these. I think they're pronounced key chargers. It's QI, but one of the wireless yeah. chargers. And I was like, I'll try it. I'll see if I like it. I immediately loved it. So I bought two more. <laughs> so we have three around the house right now. Um, I haven't plugged my phone in since we got a uh, wireless charger. Like, yeah. because I don't need to. They're so much easier and so much more convenient. Um, I, we just have them around the house. So I just like set my phone down on that and it's charging while I'm doing other stuff. Whereas before I would like right. set it down on a table or whatever. And we went with the ones that are like um, a little stand instead of, because they have those pads right. that are flat that you can like lay it down, you know, completely flat with your table. Mm-hmm. Once I actually looked at it and started thinking about use cases, we went with the ones that kind of tilt it up and it turns it into a stand because... It's just like more accessible with the phone. And then the other thing is I knew my wife would like it because she likes to watch YouTube videos in bed on her phone. And now she can turn her phone horizontal, put it in the stand, and it can be charging like while she's watching something with her head on her pillow. And she can like still have her headphones in and like have one headphone in. Like it's a very specific use case, but it's perfect for her. Um, For me, it's more, it's just nice to have it standing up because during the work week, like I, when I wake up in the middle of the night, I always check what time it is, and like it's bad of me to see notifications or like check five notifications, but I always <laughs> yeah. just want to know if something came in overnight, and it's rare, but I check it. And the thing was, I'm going to keep doing that because I know myself. Before, I would have to pick up my phone, 
And again, it's the, just this little friction, right? I'd have to pick up my phone. Now I don't have to do that. I just reach out and I tap it and I'm like, oh, yep, it's 2 a.m. I have no notifications and I'm back to sleep. I, I, that's something that I could see the stand being really good for like beside you during the work day for stuff like that. And even at night, I could see it a little bit for watching. I don't watch while I'm, a, while I'm lying in bed like that. I read. So it would be hard for me to constantly reach out to something like that and do that. But like I, I think that for the work day, it's like sitting here at my desk, like the only time Face ID, what I and I assumed it was supposed to work like this because I thought that I'd heard that it did, that even when it's lying on its side, it's supposed to recognize your face and it doesn't. So like having it standing up beside me that if I needed it to unlock, I could just have it sitting up and it would notice me and then I could tap and do what I needed to do with it instead of being, you know, the lazy first world entitled person that I am, that I have to pick up my magical computer brick and uh, that recognizes my face and swipe on this amazing magical glass. Like, I, I want to be lazy and have it recognize me without having to do that, without picking it up. I mean, I guess mine does all the time without picking it up. So I don't know does what you're it? running into. Yeah, yeah, you just tap yeah, it and like look I'm... at it and it just works. Um, I like I'm looking have mine... directly at it, but tapped it right now, and it's not even recognizing that it needs to uh, try Face ID. Yeah. No, mine doesn't run into that, so I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't like your face, I guess. Maybe, um, maybe doesn't. nobody does. We, <laughs> Animojis. we got to talk about <laughs> Animojis because you were <gasps> super excited. My kids love them. I've done them a couple times to send my kids, but you immediately dove into the poop Animoji. And, and because your kids love them, I do too. Like, I love these. Like... I thought they were so dumb when they announced them on on iPhone 10. When they did the X, I thought that it was a just a really ridiculous thing. And oh my goodness, I love Animoji. Jennifer and I send each other so many dumb Animoji during the day. Like, it's not even funny. Like, one night, like, it, I don't even think it was the first night I got mine, that we sent, um, we, we sat beside each other on the couch and send each other an emoji just being weird with it and like they're great like i send poo emojis and dragon emojis and alien things and it's really really cool because they did a great job on the facial mapping that i can make a poop emoji raise its eyebrows and look like my facial expression like the one that i sent you where it's like i'm a poo that one like at the end of it it moves its face like i do whenever i like open my mouth and have my uh, my eyebrows and eyes really wide like you can see that and it's weird like i i really think that that's neat because i love playing with stuff like that and i think the memoji are pretty neat too like you're the one who told me about even being able to make that like all of a sudden i get an animoji that's of your head and i'm like what and so i made one that looks like me and jennifer can't get one to look quite like her because even in 2018 they apparently don't understand how to animate curly hair like they That's just sad. it just doesn't work it's sad yeah i mean jennifer has curly hair and she's always having a hard time on any kind of like caricature maker or character maker in video games anything at all to look like it's not just a mangled matted mop that they've put on top of something's head yeah maybe someday they'll figure it out hopefully that's yeah it's frustrating You'd think. but yeah though the the animojis are cool um if you're in the right mindset for it, which you almost always are, I, I they're fun <laughs> for me to send to my kids. Um, but I guess it ties into the fact that like iMessage is the killer app on iOS. And I know you and I have talked about this, so we don't need to like yeah. beat it to death here. But seeing your text come through as blue for the first time in a year made me unreasonably happy. Like I should not I have know. been as joyous as I was. And I was like, good, like finally. <laughs> It's been, and it's so much easier to interact with people through iMessage. Like, I feel friction when I try to send an SMS text message to somebody that I don't want to be using iMessage. So, I just tend to talk to people on iMessage more. And you and I have been texting a lot more in the last week because uh-huh. of that. It, it's insane that that's true. It's it shouldn't weird. be true. 
but it is true. It shouldn't be. There, there's no reason for it to be true outside of the extra features that you get. I mean, you can do the Animoji. You can send uh, like things with emphasis and different effects on it. You can you can add stickers onto conversations, stuff you like love that. Your stickers. Yeah. But they, I do love stickers because well, you like, know I'm, I like I'm the, a the Mac integration too. Like the Mac OS yeah. integration is so huge for me because. I am often in meetings for a lot of my day right now. And if I'm in meetings, I can't sit there on the on my phone texting back to people. But I have all of my iMessages and all my texts to forward over to my computer because I'm on an mm-hmm. iPhone. And so they just show up in my messages app on my laptop that I always have with me and I always have open during the workday. So like basically 100% of my responding to text messages and iMessages throughout a workday is through my computer. And that's because of iOS and macOS integration. And I do that too now. Like I, I missed it, honestly. And I had, I've, it's the last week, like I have this 20, the late 2016 MacBook and I paid about $2,400 for it when it was new because I got the best one that I could reasonably afford. And I've been using my six year old Windows PC a lot more often uh, because of my setup and things like that. But just getting this has made me want to use my Mac more because of the integrations and things like because of because of iMessage. And it's weird because there is a browser version that is messages.android.com that you can use with the default Google uh, text messaging app that works the same way. It does the same thing. It, it works the same way, but this one's better. Yep. That it's like, it's it's smoother, it's slicker, that, that nothing changes. You still get desktop notifications through Chrome or Firefox or whatever, but for some reason, I didn't want to keep it up all the time, but I'll keep this one running in the background. And it's this weird... It's this weird piece of UI friction and UX friction, actually. It's not even UI friction. It's UX friction where it's just 15% smoother. It's just a slightly more integrated piece of software than the other that makes it worth using. Part of it is just the Mac ecosystem is so well intertwined and integrated with itself when you buy into it. And like a lot of people don't want to do that and I didn't for the longest time it took a long time for me to like switch over to doing more stuff on Mac like be that iPad or like right. um, Mac OS you know and having Mac as my primary work computer like I was Windows for a really long time but once I made the switch and I'm you know on iPhone and I have an iPad and I have a, a Mac laptop like they just play so well with each other that it's unbelievable and like at this point it would I don't see myself ever moving off of iOS basically for my phone or Mac OS as my primary like working um, OS because it just works like it would have to it would take something big like a company mandate saying you have to be on X system or Y phone or whatever um, to kick me off of my Mac devices like I'm I'm totally bought in and I'm I try not to fanboy like this is probably as close as I get you know, this particular episode, but I've been, you know, in the Mac world and on iOS for a long time. And I have no problem with Linux, no problem with PC. I still use them in certain circumstances. I still have some Android devices that I like too, but like at the core of it, the stuff that I want to actually use and interact with day in, day out is the iOS, Mac OS, just like Mac ecosystem. And it's weird because I really love the Android ecosystem. Like the 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 base like the base stock Android that Google puts out on the Pixel phones is wonderful. That I love the technology. I love a lot about it. Like I love almost everything about it actually. But at the end of the day when it comes to the, just using it as a as a consumer I'm going to end up going with this because of how easy it is. And it makes me feel like like as the tech nerd, as the guy who grew up uh, digging into computers and doing all of that, lot, like it makes me feel like I should be using Android, which is probably why I get these wild hairs every once in a while to go back and uh, want to tweak it and mess with it and just make it exactly what I want it to be. And But I always end up missing that, that ease that comes with iOS. Just stuff just works. Works. It Apple Pay works better than Android Pay. That I mean, it's just weird things like that. That even when I'm on the device, that I have Apple Pay on my MacBook that works with it. It's just 
it's just weird how how as much like I still think I like Android better as an operating system. I still think the things that it does are better in terms of UI a lot of times in UX, like the notification center. I I really wish that uh, that iPhone had a bar that showed you an icon of every notification that you had had waiting for you that you hadn't seen yet. That I would love that because I was able to keep up a calendar notification or a Gmail notification that would just show me all the time what specifically was there. I miss that because that's awesome, but it's just that the ease of everything else that's made me come back. And my wife has basically said that I'm not allowed to try out Android anymore, that, uh, that I'm, I'm home now is basically the way it is. Like you're not switching back, uh, because I always come back. Like, that's the thing. Like no matter what, even if I, if I break my phone or what, I always come back. I tend to be happier just without something I have to worry about, uh, because I had to buy 20,000, uh, I don't even know what it is. The 20,000 mAh uh, anchor battery battery pack to go to Spain, uh, which I would have probably needed one for an iPhone anyway, but it was an absolute necessity when I, I was running around all day on an Android phone. And uh, it's just, that's the kind of thing that I don't want to worry about. Um, it's it's well, just, welcome it's back. that. You, yeah, you're back. I mean, it's good. But no, this this was fun. Um, We don't, well, I don't change phones off, and you do because you break them <laughs> or you make rash decisions. But it it's never happened before, and it may never happen again, that you and I both change phones in the same week. So we had to make it the topic <laughs> yep. for the week. geek to geek Network stuff this week. Um, Don't forget, you can keep sending us questions because we'll do that Q&A episode around Thanksgiving-ish. We're getting some really good ones, so keep them coming. We are. Um, Geeky Guy for the week, why don't you tell people about Patreon? Really quick, we're running so, long. So really quick, patreon.com slash geek to geek cast If you want us to get a phone every year, then you should go to patreon.com slash geek to geek cast And by phone, I mean support the podcast. Yeah, the... Your money's not going towards our phones. I yeah, it's promise not you that. at all. It's going, going towards, towards server costs. Um, <laughs> yeah, really. The, is. On the network this week, Capsule J finished up the second round of the Anime Club poll. So the winners are Iru Duku. Did I say that right? And Gridman. I have no clue. Okay, well we'll go with it. Um, so you Rookie. can check out the subreddit for more details if you're interested. Um, Geek Two this week. I'm not sure what they're doing because their episodes are out of sync with ours right now. I, I never know what they're doing this week. Um, I know, it's... but I'm sure it'll be great. And then Tea Time with Katie and Chelsea this Saturday, October 20th, is their hundredth episode. They're going to do a live stream, so I'm excited for that one. What uh, time are they doing the live stream? Do we know yet? They're still figuring it out, but that's all the information I know. And I'm sure if you hit them up on Twitter or on Slack or on any of the places they will gladly let you know um with that it's probably time for a weekly geekery where we are going to cram a bunch in to 12 minutes that we have left uh why don't you go ahead okay so yeah get me to talk for 12 without going over 12 minutes yeah. right um so today 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 i got an email and this goes back to a podcast we did months ago uh we were talking about not knowing when books came out and i got an email this morning that said thank you for your purchase and i'm like i didn't buy anything on amazon and it turns out that the consuming fire the interdependency book two came out today i had pre-ordered maybe while we were recording the second book in the new john scalzi series and i had absolutely no idea that it was coming out today so i checked my email i forwarded it to void and i was like yay look this came out today and i own it and so i'm super excited to be able to start listening to that uh because i just started running again and that's going to be a fantastic way to get me out the door like i'm getting my head around running i I posted a blog recently that that it was about the grief that I've been going through. It was really cathartic, and so it's made me really want to kind of start moving again. And I'm definitely going to be working on getting through the consuming fire that I loved the first of these books. And uh, it's also made me really want to go back and do another Disney race, which my wife is like, no, you're not, because they're unbelievably expensive. I mean, you can do it as a charity runner, which, you, which gets you free... Uh, entry to it but you have to raise between like twelve hundred and three thousand dollars for that charity uh which is great it's just it's a very short amount of time at this point and uh you would still have to pay for hotel and things like that i don't think i have anywhere near enough uh 
time or effort to be able to raise the money and i can't really pay for the hotel and park tickets so uh unless somebody out there wants to be my patron and donate a bunch on patreon.com slash geek to geek cast i think that i'm just going to be running normal <laughs> everyday races um but the uh the big thing the big thing that i'm going to have to really get through is i watched iron fist season two and I loved it. It was so good. I think that this might be my favorite Netflix MCU season behind Jessica Jones season one and Luke Cage season one. Like, it's crazy it's good. I was surprised to see this in the notes. statement. Like, it's really good. And I don't know if everybody would connect to it like I did. And, like, if everybody would, would really, like, love it like I did, I guess. Because this season is pretty much entirely character-based. That after the Defenders, they realized how to uh, course correct from season one. And so Danny's acting got a lot better. Um, and it all kind of feels natural through season one, the Defenders in season two. Like, where he's becoming more acclimated to uh, to the culture. Um, but, uh, that said, it's like the characters all have an arc. Like there are, are so many subplots going around that, that all of them get fully fleshed out. Like they really start to feel like characters instead of just these people who are in this really crappy season. And it's like Misty Knight from Luke Cage comes in and she and Colleen Wing, uh, really need a buddy cop show because that is one of the best parts about this entire season is Misty and Colleen going around and fighting crime and they even joke about it like there is a joke when they that where at the end of the season where they're like you know we need a you know we should have a buddy cop show it'd be if we had a tv show it'd be called Nightwing it's like that's got a good sound to it just rolls off the tongue kind of thing I'm like <laughs> like they, they are the writers are aware that that was awesome and it's like Ward um who was a kind of an antagonist in season one um i haven't seen all of it yet but i've gone back and started it again because i like this one so much ward has actually become one of my favorite characters um i thought he was a terrible actor and i absolutely love him now and in the very final scene of this season he was awesome and i never will get to see the rest of that character again because they canceled the show and i'm really hoping there will be more of it kind of filtered into some of the others like daredevil um but i i don't know and like this season the reason i said it was character uh, the character driven is that it deals with so many issues that i can personally relate to right now like it's dealing with identity crises and addiction counseling and you know being the only one left in your family uh it deals with that a lot and like losing friends whom you consider family and this stuff hits home with me and it's what I'm dealing with right now and has really bummed me out and really honestly put me in a true depressive state and it's handled really well like that part really surprised me that they took these emotions and these truly terrible things that happen in people's lives and make you see these characters in Iron Fist make you see them as something that that is uh, bordering on poignant and it's like it made me think and evaluate things like it made me think about trying to be a better person and live a better life and make better choices and that stuff I've been working through with like my counselor and things like that but Iron Fist did this void Iron Fist did a Marvel TV show sure but Iron Fist. It sounds like it was like the this. right show at the right time, and it just caught you like with it, perfect timing. It did, and I've seen a lot of people talking about how this one is better, and I've seen a couple of people on Twitter even say that that it was uh, one of their favorite ones from the MCU. Like it's really good, and like my wife didn't watch this with me. This was one of mine that I put on because she was like, "I'm not watching Iron Fist uh, after watching the Defenders." Like Danny is terrible, and anytime I had it on though, and she came near it, someone on the screen literally every time she came nearby, I said, "I am the immortal Iron Fist," and she would groan like, "Why did they say that so much?" She was like, "Has anybody said it this episode?" I'm like, "Yeah," and uh, like. You do the one thing, and this is for pretty much all the Marvel seasons, but this one in particular, I think it's funny that you have to suspend disbelief enough to really wonder why these people don't use guns. Like, they have a gang war going on. Like, that's what's going on is that it's a gang war is the main story in season two. Uh, well, the main narrative that, that drives everything. And it's like, they're fighting with hatchets and knives. This is modern day New York City, 
and there are gang wars going on where they're using hatchet hatchets and knives in their holsters and i'm like there's a show conceit cool whatever i'll buy in on this because that's what this show is but it's like this narrative could have been expedited to where it's obviously going to go if you had a knife in your if you had a gun in your holster instead of a knife and it's like man that's crazy. Like that is is crazy to me how how all that goes. But, but I love this show. Like if you couldn't tell, I really connected with this show and it's made me go back and start watching season 1 again. I picked up from where I left off and yes, Danny's terrible. Yes, there is a lot wrong with the season 1 that they they that they have fixed and I'm so sad it got canceled. I'm glad like, you have found you it at least though. Any of it? Not season two. No, I don't really feel any compulsion to because one was so bad, but I'm glad that it worked out for you and that you like it. And like after gushing about it so much, maybe I'll give it a shot. I have to, I don't want to, if I gave it a shot right now, I'm not in the right mood for it. I, I have right, to wait. I understand. But like, if the right mood strikes, I will give it a shot now. Whereas before there was no chance I was ever going to look at it. So count that as a yeah, win. That's fair. Um, I wasn't going to look at it either until I was just like, I'm in the mood for a Marvel thing. And turns out I was playing this Marvel Strike Force game because I've been in these uh, really ridiculous uh, 5v5 arena games on uh, on the mobile devices like Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, that kind of thing. And uh, I found a DC one today, but apparently I'm really into the Marvel one the most. And I was like, I want to watch a Marvel show. I was like, I hadn't seen Iron Fist. And turns out it was actually pretty good. And Sweet. I unlocked Iron Fist on uh, Marvel uh, Strike Force yesterday, took a <laughs> screenshot, sent it to Jennifer, and just said, I'm the immortal Iron Fist. <laughs> and she was like, Ew. Wow. Wow. Uh, it's like, yep. So, so, so that's been pretty much my week. I mean, we're running out of time, so I'll save some of the rest of it but uh, for next okay. time. But I've been um, doing a lot, a lot of yeah, that. I have been playing a ton of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I think um, I want another week to play it because I'm like 25 or 30 hours in and I I have a lot of thoughts about it but they haven't gelled like I don't know how I feel about the game so that's I'm gonna so hold strange that. to me it's weird for me too but I'm I keep playing it there are things in it that I like I'll talk about it next week I think we might have to make it the main topic <laughs> so if I put yeah. that to the side um Gamefly updates really quick I got Yakuza Kiwami 2 which is more Yakuza and I think someday I'm gonna like one of these games this is not the one <laughs> Um, but you know, maybe I should just wait for like the series reinvention with the next character. It's kind of Yakuza seven, whatever they end up titling it, which might just be Yakuza seven is supposed to be a new character, like brand new from scratch. Okay. Maybe that's my onboarding point. Cause there's enough here that I think someday I'll like one of the games. Not quite there yet. Um, I got Flint hook, which is a 2d space pirate action platformer. So it's, it's really fun, like traversal and platforming. You get a grappling hook and that's the core conceit of the game is that like you swing around on a grappling hook that can only grapple onto certain grapple points. So that kind of determines how every level and how every platforming challenge feels. And I enjoyed every single platforming challenge that I did in this game. The problem is that half of the game is combat and I am not a fan of what they did with the combat at all. It's like, what did they do? It's just, it doesn't feel like it fits with the platforming. Like it's, it's a shooter. It's like a, basically a twin stick shooter almost while you're flying through the air, grappling on all these points. And it just kind of doesn't come together as well as it feels like uh, it should if they got rid of that and it was only platforming i would probably love this game um so if they ever do a second one or if they do something you know along those lines i will keep an eye out for it um i checked out doctor who season 11 and it's all right it always takes me a couple episodes of doctor who before i know what i actually think about the new doctor and the new plot lines and the new companions and i only watched the first episode so i'll probably have to circle back on that one after i watch some more in a couple weeks but it didn't get off on the wrong foot which is what i feel like happened when i tried to watch the peter capaldi capaldi whatever yeah. his name is yeah I, I, um, yep. I bounced off of that run really fast and I, this one just felt like I want to see more before I make a decision. Um, so see, and that that's good to me because yeah. I did the same thing. Like I I kind of got Doctor Who'd out. I've talked about that before, and I haven't cared even a little about this one. And I'll eventually go and watch this one just to see what she's doing and what the new showrunner is, uh, how that and what the new showrunner's doing. But uh, I so far it's been like okay there's a new doctor who season and uh, it looks pretty neat but that's where i stand on it right now i was like i'll watch sometime 
Um, and then I, the other thing that I've been doing with a lot of my time, like I've been playing it every day, maybe not for huge chunks of time, but at least every day is still Dragalia Lost. Like I really like that uh. game. Um, I did a lot of raiding. I have unlocked a bunch of characters. I gave them some money because I'm enjoying the game so much. So um, the the welcome pack for some reason is like twenty five dollars, and I looked at it and it's not that interesting. But there was it's a not. pack in there for like seven or eight dollars. I think it was seven ninety nine, and I was like, oh, this looks like about what I was after. So I gave them seven ninety nine because I wanted to support the game, and I'm still playing it every day. I'm still having a lot of fun. It's a really good handheld, you know, action RPG, basically, kind of from that Diablo lineage, although it's not Diablo at all. But I mean, it's, at all, you know, Nintendo action RPG, and I like it a lot. It's really good. Like I downloaded it. I've been playing it this week. Like it's really, really, really great game. The rating, the co-op, everything like that is great. I forget it exists. I look at it on my phone, and I'm like, eh, I could play that. And then I load up like Marvel Strike Force or the DC whatever tomorrow thing or whatever. But it's like, I log on every day or two, and I might do something, and it's like, eh. But I don't really think these Nintendo gotcha games are for me. It's like, there's something about the way that uh, Fire Emblem and this one, like the with the whatever the animal crossing one there the ui the ux i don't know there's something about that model that just hits me in that spot where it's like i don't i don't want to fully invest in this i don't and i can't really figure out what it is that that puts me where it's not doesn't put me off because the games are still really good but it's like i don't want to put more time in this than minimal like minimal amount of time and I don't, I can't figure out what particular element it is that makes me feel that way. That's interesting, especially because like Fire Emblem Heroes and Dragalia Lost are probably two of my favorite like mobile games ever at this point. Um, this one, and they're very good. Like both of them, really like good. I've got them installed and I play them, and I enjoy them when I'm playing them. But it's they're they're those games that whenever I look at it on my home screen, it's like eh, maybe. I'll do this instead and i don't i can't figure out why on my on my device i have um a primary home screen and i have a secondary home screen and then i have everything else in folders like in the background that i just have to like swipe Mm -hmm. down and search for and i only have one spot on my primary like actual home screen the first page of my phone that i keep for whatever game is worthy of that spot Uh, and fire emblem heroes has been in there for like a year maybe two years and i swapped it out this week for dragalia lost so that's how uh, i'm feeling about this game like i'm loving it it's so good so i think that's going to be just like a background game i won't keep talking about it every week but you can probably assume that i'm going to be playing that for a while and if you haven't played it y'all you should go download it and try it because it is incredibly well made and is by far far the best of the nintendo handheld games that they've made um i'm still partial to mario run though like i think it was the best game game like i had more fun with it than the others but since they're moving away from that particular model this one is by far the best cool um that's probably it for this week i will p- try to pull my assassin's creed odyssey thoughts into like a coherent space by next week and we will <laughs> talk about it one way or another even if i'm not coherent yet. y'all should see these notes like it is they're they're impressive it's it's a lot of game it's honestly a lot of game and i want I, give me another week i will i'll do my best um for now you can write to us with comments suggestions or feedback our email address is geek to geekcast at gmail.com or reach us on twitter at geek to geekcast we also have longer discussion threads on the subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash geek to geekcast we also have great discussions on Slack and Discord as well. So go to discord.geek2geekcast.com or slack.geek2geekcast.com and hang out with us and get an invite. Um, remember, like we said earlier, we're part of a podcast network, so you can go to geek2geekcast.com and see all of our shows. I blog at agreenmushroom.com and you can find me at GRN Mushroom. That's Green Mushroom without the E's on Twitter. And I'm on Twitter as at Professor Beej. That's Beej with two E's. And I'm blogging at geekfitness.net. We've been Void and Beige with your Geek to Geek podcast. That'll do it for this week. See you next week, geeks. Wait, new 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 phone. Who seriously, who dis? Hi 
everyone. I'm Katie. And I'm Chelsea. And we are the hosts of Tea Time with Katie and Chelsea. We are two best friends who love pop culture and talking about pretty much whatever we want. Katie. Yes. Stop thinking about Zac Efron and tell our future listeners what some of our latest episodes have been about. Well, we've talked about Zac Efron. No, get it together, Katie. Fine. We've talked about fan fiction, classical literature adaptations, favorite TV couples, and so much more. So grab your cup of tea or whatever your drink of choice is and download our podcast today. Hi, my name is Joe Hogan, and I'm a geek. And if you're currently listening to this, there's a good chance you're a geek too. So check out my podcast, Geektitude. Each week, I talk with somebody about their geek aptitude. Sometimes I talk to people in a geeky profession. Sometimes it's someone doing something really cool with their geekiness. Often it's another geeky podcaster. But it's always someone who wants to share their inner geek. So join me each week as we come together to geek out about all the geeky stuff we love. And remember, this week, keep it geek.